Hey guys, Rio here, and welcome back to another hashtag daily tut daily tutorial here on T God Designs, as always. Um, yesterday I went over how to create a uh, a customized layout in Adobe After Effects, and today I'm going to be getting into something a little bit more uh, concrete and tangible, and that is um, using um, repeaters in Adobe After Effects to uh, make shape layers look really kind of cool. Um, so I'll just show you an example of repeaters and stuff. Um, let's think here. Uh, this is an intro that I uploaded. Um, and as you can see, um, ooh, that was a good example. So in the first little bit here, let me zoom in. Um, in the first little bit here, we have, uh, these kind of shapes around the edge. Um, those can be done with repeaters um, and a few other elements. Let's go here. Um, the circles can be done with repeaters and stuff like that. So it's basically a way of taking one shape and repeating it a whole bunch of uh, times, uh, either in a radial fashion, a linear fashion. You can repeat it in a circle, a whole bunch of stuff. So that's the basics of this tutorial. So let's go ahead and get into things, why don't we? Um, so first off, you're going to want to create a new composition here. Um, so I've already created one uh, called Main Comp, and I've uh, done it with these settings, 1920 by 1080, 60 frames per second, and uh, duration 30 seconds. I mean, it doesn't really matter for the tutorial, but uh, of course, make it as long as you need it. Um, and to uh, use a repeater, we have to have a shape layer because that's uh, repeaters are a, a property in shape layers um, or an effector rather. I would call it like an effector. Um, but basically, uh, the first thing you want to do is uh, create your shape that you want to be repeated. So in this case, I'll do an ellipse. I'll draw it out, make it a perfect ellipse by holding down shift. And I'm going to go ahead and enable the fill and give it a black fill and click on stroke here and get rid of the stroke. Now I'm just going to bring, uh, actually, I'm going to leave the anchor point at the center of our composition, but I'm going to bring our ellipse out a little bit and I'll show you why I'm doing this in a second. So let's go ahead and grab by using Y or going up here and clicking on your pan behind anchor tool. I'm going to click on our anchor point right here and um, drag that anchor point to the center of our composition. And I have no idea where our center is, so I'm gonna go down here and enable um, title action safe, and that'll give us a center marker for our composition. And I'm gonna go ahead and put our anchor point in the center. So now you'll notice that our anchor point is in the center, but our, uh, our circle is not. And that means when we rotate it, uh, it rotates around that in a circle. And that'll be important in just a second. So now we got a circle, really kind of cool. Um, let's do some cool things with the animation of the shape. So I'm gonna go uh, down here uh, to contents, ellipse, and ellipse path. I'm gonna scroll that open and of course go to the size parameter. And um, I'm basically going to keyframe the size. So I'm gonna start the size at zero. And then I'm going to go forward about one, two, three, four, five, uh, 50 frames. Um, I held down shift and pressed page down to go ahead 10 at a time. And I'm going to go to um, 100 and then go one, two, three, four, five, and then go back down to zero. And I want to move this middle one in here. So it's going to start at zero. Um, so it's not even being shown and then it's going to go up to um, 100 in in, uh, in size and then I'm um, it goes it goes back down to zero again um, I'm going to open up the graph editor here and go ahead and ease these keyframes uh, I'm going to do a tutorial on the graph editor um, coming soon so make sure you're subscribed for that but I'm basically going to ease it out to give it a nice look and feel here. Um, so that's that with the animation. And now uh, we can get to kind of the repeater part. So I'm gonna go ahead and preview this without the repeater. 
So right now it's just a little boop, and it kind of eases in and eases up. And uh, now what we can do is go here to our shape layer, go to contents, and under contents, uh, let's close up our ellipse to make things uh, easy to look at. And right down here next to contents, uh, go ahead and click add, and then go to uh, repeater right down here at the bottom. So I'm going to click on repeater, and I'm going to twirl that open, and you'll see that we have copies and offset. Um, so I'm going to show you what these two do right now. Uh, right uh, by default, the repeater repeats off uh, in the positive x direction, so it repeats 100 pixels off to the right. Um, we can change what it uh, in what fashion it repeats later, but now let's just focus on what copies does. So what copies does is it changes the number of copies that your repeater repeats your shape. Um, offset um, changes where that starts. So if you do an offset of negative four, it's going to um, offset the the origin of where the copies start to down the line. So you can kind of see how that changes things when I move the offset. And you can change this to whatever you want, even like animate them coming in off the screen and doing that with it. So that's that's what offset does. It's it's a little interesting. Um, so I'm going to set that to zero. Um, and then uh, if you want to change in the way that the new copies are are shaped, so right now they're just off in a line. If you want to change that, um, you can go down here to the transform uh, part of the repeater. And um, let me just make sure you can see the composition at the same time here. Um, so under the transform, you'll see that the position is set to 100 and 0. Um, that basically means uh, each new copy is going to be shifted uh, a positive 100 off in, in the x direction. If I set that to negative 100, you'll see how that affects things and it goes off in the other direction. Um, I'm going to set that back down to 0. And uh, keep shifting my... I'm going to zoom out just a little bit here. Um, so that's what position does. And if you go down to uh, the scale... I'll, or actually, let me just keep the position at 100 so we can see them. If you turn the position down to 0, you'll see that it looks like it's not being repeated because all one hundred or all 8 copies in this case are just stacked right on top of each other. So to go ahead and make sure you can see them, I'll just change the position uh, transform of the repeater off to uh, 100 and 0 again so that way we can see them because they're actually in different positions. And I'm going to mess around with scale. So I want each new copy to be 90% uh, of the previous copy. So you see that the first one starts out at 100, 100, 100 uh, percent scale, and then it goes to 90, and then 90% of that 90, 90% of the one before it, 90% of the one before it, and it's gonna get smaller and smaller. And if you set that to like something like 50, you'll see the kind of exponential decay. So the next one is 50% and 50%. And this is scaled around the anchor point, so keep that in mind. If we move the anchor point um, to the center, it doesn't actually look like it's doing anything. I think it uses the uh, anchor point. Oh, you can actually change the anchor point of the repeater uh, manually. So you can change it like that. And you'll see how it kind of changes things. So that's kind of cool. Um, I'm gonna set these two parameters back. 100, 100, and I'm going to set the position off to zero. So not right now, we're not performing any uh, transform on the new copies. And let's mess around with rotation. So yeah, um, you'll see that as I change the rotation here, it, it offsets them around the anchor point. Um, and the anchor point that it's using, I believe, let me think here. I think it uses the anchor point, not this. Which anchor point? Because it's not using the layer anchor point. I'm really not sure which anchor point it's using. Usually it uses the layer anchor point and I'm really not sure what's going on here. Um, I'll have to do so. Usually, I mean, I'm not really sure why it's off. Uh, that's very, that's very odd. Am I performing any transforms? Oh, wait, no. Huh, I'm not sure. This is really embarrassing because I'm making a tutorial on it but I can't seem to figure out why it's not transforming around the anchor point. Um, 
Well, I guess you can manually change the anchor point here, um, and that'll be kind of like a, <laughs> a makeup for uh, apparently my inability to realize uh, what's going on here. Interesting. Um, I will put in the description uh, why or or what anchor point it's using because there's a, an anchor point for the lips, as you can see. Um, there's an anchor point in the middle of our lips here that you can move around, but there's also a layer anchor point. So I'm really not sure, uh, it's not using either one of those, which I think is very odd. Um, but I'm not going to spend too much time contemplating that. Um, the moral of the story is you can offset the number of, uh, offset, uh, by how much rotation each new copy is offset from the original. So as you can see, you can create some interesting animations with this. And you you can uh, flip and switch with a whole bunch of these. You can offset the position as well as the rotation to kind of get it in this like arc arc fashion like that. Or you could do um, the anchor point as well, as well as the position and do something weird. And then maybe the scale like that. And then uh, even after all that is done, you can go ahead and change like stuff like the size and you can uh, drag around the position of this guy um, of the original uh, shape and you'll see that you get this interesting look um, which is really neat like I don't think I've ever created anything like this but you'll see <laughs> like whoa this is this is definitely some cool stuff and this is just the circle guys you can do this with lines uh, like I did in Slipgator's intro um, I did a BTS on on that and you can go check that out um, and I go over repeaters a little bit more there um, but this is basically the this is the basics of a repeater this is the mechanics of how it works um, this isn't necessarily the most exciting example but at least now you know like how repeaters work and how you can use them to your advantage you can use them to create patterns um, repeat like squares and stuff tomorrow I'll be showing you guys how to make um, like an alpha placeholder out of uh, repeaters just create this checkerboard pattern which is really easy to do you could probably figure it out um, before tomorrow's tutorial um, but I think uh, repeaters are definitely very very powerful and the more you mess around with them the more you'll know and the more you know like I don't know just the, <laughs> the better you'll be I guess and uh, I'm moving the layer right now so you need to actually click on the ellipse to uh, move around the ellipse individually so yeah yeah dude uh that's pretty much this tutorial in a nutshell um just basically going over some basic shape layer stuff uh and the repeater will affect everything above it so if i added a duplicate of this ellipse and then moved it you'll see that uh everything the repeater works on everything above it so i can go ahead and do this stuff i don't know what i'm creating but it looks really kind of cool and there you go so all these ellipses are, are um, being repeated in the same fashion because the repeater is working on it. And if I drag one of them below the repeater like that, you'll see that it stops being affected um, by the repeater. Yep. Um, so that's that. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this tutorial, I'd appreciate you guys leaving a like on this video. I want to give a huge shout out to lynda.com for being the sponsor of this series. Um, a lot of people ask me like how did how did I learn how to use Adobe After Effects and create like intros and stuff like this. Um, and what I tell people is like don't spend time watching like intro tutorials and stuff. Like intro tutorials are great, but if you really want to like master your craft, it would serve you well to learn all of Adobe After Effects, even if that means watching tutorials on like like uh, I don't like uh, like compositing stuff for like uh film and like short films and stuff in adobe after effects like creating like a, a burning barrel <laughs> like from some camera to foot like even if it's totally unrelated you'll still learn something interesting about after effects that will help you in projects that you wouldn't even think of down the down the road um so lynda.com is great um i personally have watched their entire after effects series um and like I said, I find out stuff that I just had no idea on before. So this is their course on repeaters. Uh, they go a little bit more into depth, and they also have some stuff on like um, some other other of the effectors, like uh, wiggle paths and merge paths, offset. Um, 
So you can go and check that out and use the link down in the description, um, which is my referral link. So I'll get a small kickback from telling you about it. Um, but that's pretty much that. I just, this is probably the only sponsor that I'll take just because I've personally binge watched so many of their stuff and I approached them and said, hey, you know, I'm going to be recommending you guys anyways. Can I get like some kickback for it? So that's Luna.com. You don't have to use it. You can use uh, YouTube tutorials and stuff, but I thought I'd give it a quick shout since I do really enjoy their stuff. Um, but yeah, that's the end of this tutorial. I'll see you guys tomorrow for how to make like uh, alpha, alpha placeholders for like the beginnings of your intros and stuff where like uh, you can kind of show like overlays and stuff um, and have your own custom alpha background. Um, yeah, so I'll see you guys tomorrow for that. Thank you guys so much for watching and uh, take it easy. Peace.